morning from Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia on the proverbial beautiful night for baseball. After thunderstorms last night, the Philadelphia Phillies will host the Houston Astros in a week of thunderstorms baseball-wise for the Phillies, who are maintaining their seven-game lead atop the National League East as we ask the question, is there a pennant race in this division? Hi, Keith Olbermann along with Buck Martinez to bring you the Phillies and the Astros. And there seem to be only two opinions in this city today, Buck. Either the Phillies have already clinched the National League Eastern Division Championship or they are in the process of repeating 1964 and giving away a big lead. Yeah, Keith, in the town, there's a lot of talk about 64 and the way the Phillies lost that pennant that year. But most of the players on this field don't know anything about 64. Some of them weren't even born yet. Since 64, the Phillies have won five division championships, two National League pennants, and a World Series. They've got a lot of winning tradition. Yeah, they haven't won since 86, but too many good things have happened this year to let it slip away. Their leader's Lenny Dykstra, and he took things into his own hands last night with this three run homer. They were losing three games of the four game series on the verge of being swept. So Lenny Dykstra said, don't worry about it, fellas. I'll do it. And he's been doing it all year long for him. Meanwhile, a team that has not done it all year long, the Houston Astros, truly a disappointment. And one of the pitchers who's been a disappointment for them this year, facing a pitcher whose trade last year to the Phillies by the Astros was certainly their disappointment of 92. Yeah, it was. You know, Greg Swindell and Doug Drabeck were supposed to be the leaders of the Houston Astros, and they were supposed to contend in the West. It hasn't been the case. Kurt Schilling has been off and on, but right now he's on a hot streak. That he's certainly done more than uh, Schilling has done for them, more than certainly Jason Grimsley did, the man they got for it. We'll be back with the starting lineups, the Astros and the Phillies, from Philadelphia. Stay with us. ESPN Major League Baseball is brought to you by cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Get out of the old. Get into the cold. And glad to have you with us on ESPN's Friday Night Doubleheader Baseball. We'll be keeping you up to date with all the other activity, including Dave Winfield, who is four hits away from 3,000 for his career. We'll take you there live if he gets close enough. The Twins playing a doubleheader against the Texas Rangers. Texas five games off the lead in the American League West. Second inning, David McCarty batting. Mario Diaz and Strange get him, got him good. They turn the double play in the third inning. Texas holding a 2-1 to one lead. It has moved now to the fourth inning. The Red Sox and the Indians, top of the six, two on for Felix Fermin off Roger Clemens. Over Billy Hatcher's head, Bell and Sorrento score to give Cleveland a four to one lead. Bottom of the sixth, Mike Greenwell hits it up, out, and gone off Bob Ojeda. A two run homer, his 11th of the season. It's a four three lead in the first of a doubleheader in Cleveland. The Indians have it, they're in the eighth inning. Some other activity, the A's and the Orioles. Mike Mussina going for Baltimore tonight, just a half game off Toronto's lead, tied with the Yankees in the American League East. The Jays at home with California. Stottlemyre pitching for Toronto. The Yankees in Kansas City, Jim Abbott and David Cohn, an exciting matchup there. Over in the National League, Cincinnati and Montreal, bad news for the Reds. Kevin Mitchell out for the remainder of the year with a shoulder injury. Rotator cuff problems have knocked him out. Mitchell only played in 93 games through the course of the season. Later on, the Braves at San Diego and the Cardinals at San Francisco. We'll send you back out to Keith Olbermann and Buck Martinez. Enjoy the game. We'll update all the other activity. Chris, thank you very much. much. Back at the vet where we uh, await the start of the Phillies and the Astros as uh, Let's look at the uh, starting lineup that uh, Kurt Schilling of the Phillies will face. Uh, for Houston, of course, it's the now power hitting second baseman. We'll receive all star Craig Biggio leading off. Following uh, him, Steve Finley hitting at 263 at its center field after a terrible start uh, after a uh, bout of illness. Jeff Bagwell, the uh, first baseman, hits third. Luis Gonzalez over 300 now after his own terrible start. His cleanup hitter batting uh, fourth and playing in left field. Ken Caminiti. Uh, then hits fifth and plays third. Eric Anthony, who's tailed off after a terrifically hot start for the Astros, bats sixth, that is in right. The left-handed half of the platoon, Eddie Talbancy, the catcher, hits seventh, and to Arsenio eighth, and uh, Greg Swindell, the starter, is ninth. Coach Schilling's on the mound for the Phillies, and he's the winner of four straight. Schilling on the season, 12 and six. He went through a real cold spell right before the All-Star break when he lost five in a row, but he's got it back on track now. His control has been outstanding since the All-Star break, averaging four strikeouts to walks. He's a power pitcher with good control. And as we mentioned as we went in, the former Astro traded in the spring of 1992 for Jason Grimsley. He likes to beat this team. He likes to remind them of that deal. Here's the first pitch to Biggio. Swung on and a chopper hit to the shortstop. Stocker up with it off one bounce and guns him out at first. One pitch, one out. 
Now everybody knows that Schilling throws the ball over the plate, so the Astros are going to step in ready to hit tonight. Defensively, the Phillies stack up like this. It's Inca, Villa, Dykstra, and West Chamberlain in the outfield. On the infield, Dave Hollins and rookie Kevin Stocker at short. Stocker's an outstanding young player. Mario Duncan, the second baseman. John Crockett first, and the veteran Darren Dalton behind the plate. And now a veteran of uh, two full seasons in Houston, Steve Finley, the center fielder, steps in and takes the first pitch inside for a ball. Finley was ill most of the early part of the season, has made quite a comeback, statistically at least, Buck. Yeah, he's a very promising young player that's trying to establish himself as a premier center fielder here in this league. And there's the strike to even the counted one. Combination of speed. Pretty good number two hitter for Art Howe. And now Schilling's ready once again off the 1-1. Called on the outside corner by home plate umpire Steve Ripley, and we're 1-2. You say speed and power and also chiropractic skills. He was uh, toying with becoming a chiropractor. See him back away from that pitch? No, I'm sorry. That was a terrible fight. Even your count at two and two. All right, I got one out of the way, Buck. Chilling ready again. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and foul down the line in left. Do you think that the uh, that any of the players that the Astros got in the Glenn Davis deal, he or Harnish, or in fact Schilling was the other guy, any sense of vindication or any contact or reaction at all to the Glenn Davis thing? I don't think so. And Al Finley is hit one deep to right. Back goes Chamberlain to the fence. He'll watch it go. Home run, Steve Finley, and the Astros take a one nothing lead. The ball just carried and carried and carried. And it's been a notorious thing for Schilling this year in terms of home runs, Buck. Just another one. That's the 21st home run of the season that Schilling has allowed. For comparison's sake, last year he gave up just 11, and that's been a problem for him. Finley hits his fifth home run of the season, and the Astros have an early lead. Here we are tight on the swing, Buck. Well, you can see he got under it a little bit, but all day long during batting practice, the hitters were talking about just how well the ball was carrying. You can see Chamberlain just runs out of room. All right, Bagwell has stepped in and taken a strike. His 61 extra base hits leads the Astros, and it is fact more than any other player in this ballpark. He would have led the, led the fills. If you're playing for them, here's the 0-1. Ripley moved as if to call it. We'll settle on a 1-1 count. There's Mr. Finley after he's drawn around the bases. This club has now hit 124 home runs. And so quietly, so little publicity the Astros this season. Bagwell checks the swing and takes inside. We're two and one. You know, you look at their lineup and you don't really get the impression that they're late with power. But they have a lot of good hitters, and this is one of them right here, Jeff Bagwell. Well, you look at the statistics, Buck, and everybody's got 10 homers, 15 homers. Some of the coaches have 10 or 15 homers. Here's a 2-1 from Schilling now. And fouled away. Skitters into the crowd back of the home plate, right side. We're even at two and two. Well, they have six players in double figures in home runs this year. You think on down the road the rest of this month, their club record for homers is 134. Well within reach. I wonder why that is. Something to do with that little building they play in? Full count as the ball is low and inside on Bagwell, down about the knees and below. They didn't know if he was going to be a power hitter coming out of the minors, but he played in some large ballparks there. Three two pitches way outside, and it has not been a, a good start for Kurt Schilling as he walks Bagwell on six pitches. Keith, you know, everybody in this Philly locker room earlier in the ballgame said, oh, yeah, we're not worried about what's going on right now, but when you get on the field, players have a tendency to press a little bit. Yeah, they've got a seven-game lead. There just 22 games left on their schedule. But you've got to eliminate all that negative thoughts and just go out there and do your normal thing. And as Louis Gonzalez steps in, we were talking before about the possibility that Schilling still wanting to prove that bad trade to uh, Astros uh, executives may overthrow to some degree as Gonzalez sends the first one down the left field line into the stand. Well, if he is overthrowing, you're going to see a lot of balls up in the strike zone. When he smooths out his delivery, he should be downstairs a lot. 
Luis Gonzalez is a story in his own right. We talked about what a uh, great second half Steve Finley has had coming back from uh, injury. Gonzalez has pushed his batting average over 300 when he was in the 230s and 240s as late as July. A year in which he's really come into his own. And swings and skitters it foul now to the second deck behind uh, the plate. Keith, that renewed confidence at the plate goes all the way back into last season. He was sent down to the minor leagues in May of 92. And unlike a lot of players, he didn't think about a raw deal. He thought about playing his way back to the big leagues. And when he was in the minors, he had over 400. All right, with one out and Bagwell leading from first, here's the 0-2. Called strike three on the inside corner. And Schilling and the Phillies have their second out of this top of the first inning. Which will bring up the third baseman, Ken Caminiti. Here's that last pitch again. Dalton sneaks inside, and so many hitters in the big leagues today with two strikes think out over the plate. Schilling crosses him up and got the fastball over the inside corner. And that's the reputation that uh, Gonzalez has. If there's a weakness, it's inside. All right, here's Ken Caminiti at 256. Pops this one up. The second baseman, Duncan, has a bead on it. And right on the strike, he's got it. So for the Astros, one run on one hit, no errors, and a man left in at the top of the first. One nothing, Houston. Stay with us. Baseball rejoins you from the vet in Philadelphia, where the home run in the top of the first inning by Steve Finley has the Houston Astros atop the Phillies at one to nothing. Let's look at this Philadelphia Phillies lineup. It is a fairly traditional one, facing left-handers. Lenny Dykstra will lead off, center fielder, hitting 306, two homers, career high five RBI last night. Mariano Duncan bat second and plays second. John Crux, your first baseman, still hitting at 320 and uh, batting third. Dave Hollins in the cleanup slot at third base. Darren Dutch Dalton catches and hits fifth. Beating Camellia back much sooner than expected after a knee injury the other night. He's in left field, batting seventh. Wes Chamberlain, who will be in right as part of the platoon with Jim Eisenreich. Kevin Stocker, the hot-hitting rookie shortstop at 339 going in. Bats eighth. Kurt Schilling's the pitcher batting ninth. And they will face the left-hander out of the University of Texas, Greg Swindell. Greg Swindell signed as a free agent in the offseason, and the Astros had hoped he'd be their number two pitcher behind Doug Drabeck. But he's had a bout with shoulder problems. His last five starts have been good. He's three and two in those five starts. He's had 28 strikeouts and just five walks. One thing Swindell's done recently is he's eliminated the curveball. He's trying to get his slider back. So he's eliminated the one breaking pitch to concentrate on the slider. Now Dykstra will lead off for the Phillies and what a spark he provided to them last night. Three-run homer in the second and then a two-run homer later on and that precipitated a bench-clearing brawl. Takes the first pitch on the outside corner for a strike from Swindell. There are two premier leadoff hitters in the National League. Brett Butler and Len Dykstra. And they make the pitcher work. Dykstra will take an awful lot of pitches and get a good look at Swindell. See how he's throwing but he'll make Swindell work here in the first at bat. Count even at one and one. Here's the next one. Dobbinsy wanted it. It's a ball. How long will Lenny Dykstra be at bat? He likes to wait out Mr. Swindell, does he not? Well, Swindell has faced Dykstra earlier in the year in two different at bats. One at bat, 15 pitches. The other one, 12 pitches. This one's fouled out back here. Fortunately, far enough away and above us in the booth to even the count at two and two. Maybe that explains why, and you can't go with these statistics as if they mean a great deal, but Len Dykstra is a 500 lifetime hitter against Greg Swindell, and perhaps it is. Is it to the pitcher's advantage or the batter's advantage to sit there through a long at bat? It's to the batter's advantage. He sees all of his pitches. Gets a good read on the movement. He's able to pick up the spin on the breaking ball and all good hitters will tell you, boy, if I get a chance to foul off some tough pitches and really make him work, I feel better with every pitch. And this is where a hitter can uh, wind up in the box score with a strikeout. And if he's uh, had a tremendous at bat from learning something, it's worth his while. Another 2 2 to Dykstra. Must have been high. We're at 3 and 2. You cannot say enough about what Dykstra has meant to the Phillies offensively this year. There's just no words to describe it. And the key ingredient, this is the same player that they've had since they got him from the Mets in 89. The key ingredient has been he's been healthy. All right, here's the payoff. And he laces it down the right field line. This will be extra bases. Dykstra motoring pass first. 
in the corner. Anthony's digging it up. Dykstra not even pausing, going to third. There'll be no play as Dykstra slides in unnecessarily with a triple. Five on the ear for Lenny Dykstra. The kind of play that wakes the Phillies up. This is why he's one of the best leadoff hitters in baseball. He sets the table early for the Phillies. He battled him tough, got a 3-2 fastball, rips it down into the corner. Anthony's momentum carries him into the wall, and by this time, Dykstra's all the way to third. And the slide in uh, a precautionary measure at worst. Well, he had to get dirty. <laughs> Wouldn't be a full night for Len if there wasn't some scuff there on the uniform. All right, here's Duncan, who charged the mound last night and started the rumble with the Phillies' potential tying run at third base. Takes a strike. The yeah, funny thing, Buck, about uh, Duncan, over his dugout was the sign, let's get ready to rumble, and it did not go up after the fight last night. He was hit by a pitch after Dykstra's second home run. Charged the mound, and it was all over the place. Ali Ali Oxenfree. Swindell now at 0-1 delivers. Called strike on the inside corner. Well, he's trying to work him inside. Mariano Duncan is very good up and out over the plate, particularly in a situation where the sacrifice fly will cash it a run. So Swindell is crowding him on both of the first two pitches. Phillies can get a run on a ground ball as the Astros infield is back. Here's the 0-2. Tried to check it. Did not. Strike three and he's gone. The Astro defense, they've committed 102 errors. They need to improve in that area somewhat if they're going to move up in a division. In the outfield, it's Gonzalez, Finley, and Anthony. On the infield, Kim Caminiti, a very good defensive third baseman. Andahar Sedeno has committed 20 errors at shortstop. Craig Biggio, the converted catcher, moves into second base. Bagwell's at first, and Eddie Tobinze is behind the plate. And the large figure, slightly to the right of Eddie Tobinze, is who else but John Cruck. Still batting at 320 after some problems in the last few weeks. Seems to be snapping out of it, hitting sharply again. Takes the first pitch outside for a ball. Yeah, you know you're in pretty good shape when you've been in a slump and you're still hitting 320. I think the term in good shape as it relates to John Cruck <laughs> may be metaphoric only, Buck. Well, no, he's in good shape. He's hitting 320. Ah, that's all that matters. <laughs> if, he have, if he has proven one thing in his career and he's a great ball player, it's that that's what matters. All right, now he's going to try to bring home the tying run from third. Leans out of the way of it, and it's a strike. Shades of Randy Johnson in the All-Star game, one and one. He'll never live that down, will he? No, not at all. I don't think he cares to. Doesn't really bug him. Well, he's a ball player and entertainer. He was knocking the Astros down earlier on uh, before the game here around the batting cage, leaving them as stitch in stitches as usual and congratulating Daryl Kyle. One-one pitch is ready. Here it comes, chopped to first base. Bagwell will let the run score, get the certain out at first, and the Phillies have tied it up on the front ground ball. Boy, they didn't waste any time to tie the game back up. Dykstra's leadoff triple, and then Cruck with the ground ball out to first base cashes in that early run. I tell you, that's just a good piece of hitting. He was up there with two strikes. Swindell had him in a hole, but let him get off the hook. Got the ground ball to the first baseman, and Cruck picks up the RBI. All right, here comes one of the uh, Phillies. We well, can't call them dirty dozen. Maybe that is the correct number. Dozen dirty guys, and we mean that in a complimentary sense. Dave Hollins, the switch hitting third baseman, batting at 276 and awaiting the first pitch with two out here from Swindell. Low and inside for a ball. Hollins is a switch hitter with good power. 17 homers, 83 RBIs, but he's got tremendous power from the right side. He's a 335 hitter. Facing left-handed pitchers. Here's the 1-0. And that one's in the dirt. Dobbinsy with the block. Nobody on base. Doesn't make a difference. 2-0. They say about Holland's buck that uh, you cannot really pitch him low and away because as he bats from either side of the plate, he tends to lunge in and, and almost centers up those uh, outside pitches. So there's no point in doing that. The only way to do it is to come inside, and he's willing to take the hit batsman. When he takes a ball there, we're now at 3-0. Well, he's backed off the plate some this year, and I think that's allowed him to get better extension. I think he'll get the green light here. It's a pretty well-disciplined ball club at the plate. Now Takes the strike. Taken all the way.
Yet another one of the products of the San Diego Padre farm system in one awful winter when they traded away Carlos Baerga and let Dave Hollins go in the draft. 3-1 is hit chopper to Caminiti. Up with it cleanly. One throw to Bagwell, and that's that. Now the Phillies tire up on the Dykstra triple and the Kruk ground ball, and after one inning, we're 1-1. Stay with us on Friday Night Baseball from Philly. Rejoining you from the vet in Philadelphia, we've had two half innings. We've had a run in each, and we're tied at 1-1. One and one. Don't forget CFA primetime. Georgia versus Tennessee tomorrow night at 7.30. Bulldogs trying to rebound from a tough season opening loss. The South Carolina's volunteers started off with Saturday a college game day at 11.30. Fowler and company, and then Georgia at Tennessee, as we're saying. The uh, tough loss to South Carolina. Looking to start 2-0 behind the tough offense, led by tough quarterback Heath Tough Shure. And now one of the Astros' tough hitters, Eric Anthony, steps in, takes the strike on the outside, starting the second inning. Eric Anthony is one for 19 this month. It is not a September song for him. Here's the 0-1. Dalton has to stand up to get it. We're one and one. Well, that average is a large part of why he's in the sixth spot tonight. Art Howe has dropped him out of that cleanoff slot, put him down into number six. And he hits this one left side into the seats and well foul. One and two. He had a good start to this season, though. It looked like uh, this was the Eric Anthony they've been expecting for certainly three years. Well, he led the club in homers last year with 19. One, two coming from Schilling, and it's high again, two and two. Well, we talked about Anthony and his power. I think what the Astros would like to see from him is a little more freewheeling. Take advantage of that good power. Here's Schilling again at two and two, and he chops one foul over the Phillies dugout. Elaborate on that. In what sense? Well, sometimes young players have a tendency to think more about the average and not recognize what their real true skills are. And Anthony has tremendous power, and I think Art Howe would love to see him go up there and think about knocking the ball out of the ballpark, not worry about those tentative swings guarding against strikeouts. The 2-2 is hit with power to center field. Back goes Dykstra. Dykstra almost to the warning track. Has it in play and makes the catch. A little of the power we're talking about from Eric Anthony, but Dykstra on it all the way for the first out of the inning. And we'll see Eddie Taubensey, the catcher, who continues to live under the shadow like it was his fault or something, of having been the principal in the Cleveland-Houston trade of two winters ago in which... The Indians got a little outfielder named Ken Lofton from Houston. Why he should bear the brunt of any of this is beyond my ability to understand. Everybody's always comparing players that have been traded for one another. Dobbins, he's done a good job sharing the catching duties with Scott Service. Here's the 1-0. Fouled away back of the plate. Service and Tobinzi. Combining for good power numbers. They're very productive. Tobinzi, the left-handed hitter, plays against right-handed pitchers. And another guy with the power and perhaps what you were talking about with Anthony. Let's uh, use it more. Let's see it more and not worry about the base hits. Ground ball picked up easily by Duncan and the gun across first with two out. Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia for ESPN's Friday Night Baseball. Keith Olbermann along with Buck Martinez. Tied 1-1. Finley with a homer in the first for Houston. Dykstra's leadoff triple in the bottom of the first and a crook ground out. Tied it up in a game that is, well, not vital to the pennant race, but pretty good. Buck Martinez to my right. If you've got a stereo television, he's coming out of the right speaker and I'm coming out of the left. No, it doesn't work that way? I guess not. Andrew Harcedeno coming in from the right side. The shortstop hitting at 283. And the first pitch from Schilling. Lofted to right field. Chamberlain moving back, ambling back towards the track. Nearly there and well underneath it. Got it for the last out. One, two, three. So the Astros go quietly in the top of the second. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. You were tied at one. Bottom of the second coming up. Stay with us. from Philadelphia from the Mets. That would be the sign of the Liberty Bell and be an indicator as to where we are. Keep holding with Buck Martinez and somebody who's hit the bell a couple of times in the Phillies this year. Darren Dutch Dalton, the catcher, stepping in and lead the bottom of the second against Greg Swindell. 
Takes the first pitch for a strike. Dalton at 261, the 23 homers, the 97 RBI. Hadn't hit the left-handers well, but just belies that statement. The words were not even out of my mouth when he lands the, uh, lands the single to right field. And the Phillies have the leadoff man on once again, twice in two innings against Swindell. Swindell was trying to get that pitch away from Dalton and left it out over the plate. Let's take a look at it. See where Tobinzi set up? Looks like a slider that it's down, goes down and hooks it into right field. That's the pitch that Swindell's trying to really improve upon. That's why he's eliminated the curveball, just concentrating on the slider. And now the uh, gentleman who was supposed to be out three to five days with a bad knee that he sprained Wednesday night, three to five days moved pretty quickly in the middle of the pennant race. Pete Incavilia steps in uh, against Swindell. With just 93 hits this year, he has 83 RBI, 13th best performance of all time with anybody who's uh, had as many as 83 RBI in a season. That's an arcane stat, but it does indicate some productivity. Buck. Well, it sure does. You get up to the plate with guys on base, and Incavilia delivers. You mentioned his knee problem. He injured his knee Wednesday night, chasing down a triple in the outfield. He said, well, I got all winter to get better. That down and dirty atmosphere from the Phillies. Here's the 0-1 pitch, and it's hit to right field. Anthony moving to his right and back and it's off the wall Dalton is rounding second Incavilia behind him they're sending home Dalton Incavilia is sliding into third and Dalton has scored the Phillies are ahead the second triple in as many innings for Philadelphia and they take the two to one lead third triple of the year for Pete Incavilia and we talked about his ability to drive in runs there's a good example of it Watch how he takes this pitch up and away from him and drives it to the wall in right field. Anthony kind of ran underneath it and looked like he might have had a play if he took a better path to it. And once it caroms off the wall, that allows Darren Dalton to come all the way around from first base and score the go-ahead run. Do you get the feeling, Buck, that uh, the uh, wind action may be out towards right field? That's the second time Eric Anthony seems to have been deceived as to where the ball was going to go. It, not that it affected the Dykstra triple in the first, but it certainly seemed to have a play in this one. Yeah, that ball really carried once it got up into the wind. All right, the infield is now in for West Chamberlain. Here's the first pitch, and it's line to Caminiti. Perfect reaction time. Inky gets back in time, and there's uh, only the one out. Few third basemen in the National League are as quick as Ken Caminiti. That's a very tough play when you're even with a bag and a big slugger like West Chamberlain rips it toward you. He goes right to his left and gloves it. And Cavillia has to retreat the third. And third baseman and hockey goalies come from the same stock. Ken Caminiti might have been either. Speaking of stock, here's Kevin Stocker, the uh, switch hitting rookie shortstop, who's done such a wonderful job. They knew he would be at least above average and above adequate at shortstop for them. But the hitting has been marvelous. 339 going into play today. He was only hitting 233 at AAA ball before they called him up about 200 plate appearances ago. Here's the pitch with the infield still in on what would be the grass and it's a strike 0 and 1. You get into this atmosphere with this Philly ball club and everybody plays better. Stocker is swinging the bat like he's never swung it before. And he swings it to right field. Anthony will not be able to get this one. Takes it on the hop. The run scores. Incavilia trots home and now the Phillies are up 3 to 1. Devin Stocker hit 220 at Spartanburg in his first year as a pro in 91. 283 at Clearwater as Incavilla gets some much needed and well-deserved rest. 250 at Reading in 92 and then the 233 this year. Good well, choice. you can see he had an idea. He wanted to go the other way. He takes that breaking pitch away from him and dumps it in front of Eric Anthony. That's his 28th RBI. No problem with Incavilla's knee as he comes across the plate to score. And Stocker now at uh, 418 batting right-handed after that RBI single. And here's the pitcher Schilling. It might be a bunch. He bunts through it for the strike. Well, with one out and the runner at first, they would just as soon have Schilling put the sacrifice down, move that base runner into scoring position for the leadoff hitter Lenny Dykstra. He will be trying it once again, 0-1. 
And now it got down beautifully to first. Bagwell up with it quickly. Looks briefly to second, but goes instead to Biggio at first. Covering, and the sacrifice is successful. Three to four. So with two out, Dykstra once again. Who else? Now Schilling with his ninth sacrifice and Art Howe's club already down by a couple. It must appear if you're playing the Phillies that Dykstra, well, that there might be three or four different Dykstras. Only part of this great Philly outfield. Look at what they've done in the outfield, the production. Platoon and left in Cavillia and Thompson, 124 RBIs. Dykstra's had a huge year with runs scored, 129. Eisenreich and Chamberlain, 90 ribbies and 80s runs scored. Phenomenal production from five outfielders. All right, Dykstra took the first one high for a ball. The only one who plays every day, Len Dykstra, and that, as we said before, has been the key to his season. He's been there to play every day. They have not had to have another center fielder in the lineup all season long. With that characteristic Ty Cobb-like pointing of the bat as he awaits the pitch, here's the 1-0 off the end of the bat and down the third base side and foul. Is the key to managing yourself as a hitter the ability to learn to go the opposite way? Is that the, the one universal? Well, it's a very important aspect of hitting because in order to go the other way, you have to be confident and patient enough to wait. All right, here's Stocker at second. Phillies are already leading 3-1, to one, having scored twice in this inning, and Dykstra is up with a count of 1-1 one one against Greg Swindell. He scored the first Phillies run on the triple in the first inning. Takes the ball. A little outside, 2-1. and one. Dykstra saw seven pitches in his first at bat. Ended up with a leadoff triple. This is what Jim Fergosi loves about Lenny Dykstra. He steps into the batter's box with a plan. Always thinking about which pitch he might get. Has great eye at the plate. Very patient. Here's the 2-1. It's low and in the dirt for 3-1. and one. And then there's that look that he gives you as a pitcher. Is it a smile? Is it a grimace? Is it a stare down? What is it? It's Len. That's what it is. The old proverbial game face. Swindell hasn't had too much fun against the Phillies this year. He's 0-2. His ERA before the game, 540. 3-1 from him now. That's a strike. Must have just made it. We're at full count 3-2. and two. As we were when Dykstra tripled in the first inning underscoring your point buck about his willingness to stand in there and go through long at bats and try to get an advantage he, 250 hitters aren't patient enough to take that many pitches 300 hitters take a lot of pitches because they know they can hit with two strikes all right here's the three two and it's fouled away once again and Len is going for a little tour back of the plate he makes the complete circuit and back into the box The Phillies bench looking on with yet another lead. Last night they were up 9-2 to two and hung on for dear life against the Chicago Cubs. We've taken the first three games of the series. The count is 3-2 on Dykstra. Stocker at second and two out in the bottom of the second inning. And Dykstra hits it off the end of the bat. It's in the gap. It's way back. And Gonzalez tracks it down. Moving to his left. The inning is over. The Phillies scored two runs on three hits. They leave a man. They now maintain the 3-1 lead. We'll be back from Philadelphia after this. The Phillies with one in the first and two in the second now lead the Houston Astros 3-1 here on Friday Night Baseball at the Vet in Philadelphia. Usually it's Friday night at the fights. In fact, here it was Thursday night at the fights. Len Dykstra last night had just hit his second home run when this happened. Umpire throws Castillo out of the game and Duncan charges the mound. And look at the Phillies pour out of that dugout. Everybody gets in the middle of it. Reaction time was everything on this. We're back to live <laughs> action as uh, Swindell takes the first pitch for his strike. The most impressive part about that fight last night, well, there were two things. All right, wait, here's the 0-1 pitch from Schilling. Tap back now to second base, and Duncan, the man who started the brawl, throws him out at second. Well, you got Duncan charging the mound, and he got there quickly. Everybody got out of the dugout immediately, except... For Mike Williams, who starts Saturday night, who was, the fight was already in complete progress, and Mike came out of the dugout, his shirt tail was hanging out, leading to the theory that he was either relaxing in the clubhouse or was otherwise occupied in some way. 
in any event he was out there last the other one was Terry Mulholland with a bad hand in the middle of everything pulling Darren Dalton off it was a major league fight brief no one was hurt that'll do I guess I'm corrected that right Frank Castillo did get a cut between the fingers of one hand as Biggio takes a strike and we're 0 one one thing you worry about any time is losing a player to an injury and it's got to be a major concern for the Phillies I can't afford to lose anybody right now Biggio swings through the second pitch and we're 0 2 that's a very good changeup. Johnny Padres the pitching coach really thinks that Schilling would be much better off if he used it more often he really likes his changeup and thinks it could be a very valuable pitch for him here's the 0 2 to Biggio well, he liked it so much he threw it again. <laughs> People who look at the statistics and see that uh, seemingly out of nowhere Craig Biggio has hit 18 homers this year. Uh, do, see what the sudden development of a hitter or the fact that his strength is finally coming to maturation or what. A little loft on this ball of right field as Chamberlain ambles in towards it and gets him out. Well, there's a lot of people around baseball in both leagues that believe there's something going on with the ball. The ball's really jumping. But I think in Biggio's case, he is just now understanding the knowledge of hitters, his own strengths, how to be more selective at the plate, and look for pitches that he can drive out of the ballpark. He hit for power. 13 homers, I guess it was, in 89. He hit for power in the minors uh, to some degree and in college, so it's not a total surprise. Speaking of power, Finley homered first time up for the Astros' only run, takes a strike, and we're 0-1. Working quickly, Schilling's back with another one. 0-2. He can work as quickly as he likes, as far as Johnny Padres and Jim Fregosi are concerned, if those are the results. This one's in the dirt, and Dutch Dalton flings off the mask to go inspect the ball, returns it to Steve Ripley, and now Schilling will get a new one. Keith, when you have a two-run lead in the ball game, your manager, your defensive players want you to work quickly. Throw it over, put it in play, give us a chance to make outs for you. And of course, keep everybody on their toes and in the game. And the fans as well. Not that they have a part in the decision of how the game is played, but the average fan would say keep working quickly. Count one and two now on Steve Finley after the uh, home run early, and Jim Fergosi in a relaxed condition now with his Phillies up three to one. It has not been a relaxing week for him. Last night he had to go out and get his closer Mitch Williams before the game was over which is something he's only had to do seven times this season. All right the one two now from Schilling. That's in the outside corner of the plate for ball. OK at this time of the season you'll do those kinds of things when you recognize maybe Matt William Mitch Williams didn't have it to go out and say OK well you've been great for us all year tonight you don't have it we'll go to somebody else. Katie barred the door I believe was a. Uh, well-worn expression that described a game like last night. Count is even on Finley, and here comes the 2-2 pitch. That's low also, and we're full again. David West finished up last night for the save for Philadelphia. 3-2 coming to Finley, and he hits it left side. Stocker backhands it. Here's the throw. Got him at first. Nice stretch from Kruk. Inning is over. And the Astros go 1-2-3 again. It is still 3-1 Philadelphia. We'll rejoin you for the bottom of the third next. There's a drive down the left field line. Way back there. Sunday night baseball coming up surprisingly enough on Sunday night John Miller and Joe Morgan bringing you the uh, continuing excitement of the American League pennant race and uh, while we were doing that Duncan took a strike to lead off the bottom of the third inning and Greg Swindell works again to him 0 1 foul ball up into the upper deck back at first base on Sunday night you see the Orioles man have they played themselves back into the hunt just a half a game behind the Yankees and the Blue Jays in the American League East. The Orioles a spinning coin do not call it heads or tails until the season is over it has been both for them at times this year Duncan hits one left side Caminiti up with it cleanly and guns across the diamond to Bagwell for the first out of the inning. 
It is interesting to note that if the Houston Astros, with uh, their record of uh, nine above 500, 15 games out, would be four games back in the American League East. They would be in the pennant race. Back of the Yankees and the Toronto Blue Jays who are, wow, tied. That's the first <laughs> time that's happened this year, hasn't it, Buck? The Yankees Gee, have not been able to make that final step and move into first pace by themselves. All right, here's Kruk takes the first pitch for a ball. He is ground out to Bagwell in the first inning. Scored Dykstra with the Phillies' first run. Tying run. We're now 3-1 to one Philadelphia. Bottom of the third inning. Here's Swindell's second offering, and it is swung on and hit to left field. Gonzalez moving towards the line, moving towards the corner, and he gets it before he hits the fence. Nice catch, nice play, Luis Gonzalez. Well, we saw Gonzalez go into the gap in left center to take a drive off the bat of Dykstra, and this time he has to go into foul ground. And this is always difficult for a visiting player when you don't have an awful lot of room. You can see he bangs into the wall there in left. Good concentration. Gonzalez really rounds out a very good outfield. They've got good speed. They get good jumps on the ball, and they throw well. Good outfield, good ball player. Here's another one. Hollins is in once again, and he won slash ones down the uh, left field side between Caminiti and Cedeno for a clean single. Two out single, and the uh, Phillies have something going once again. And now here's Dalton. Singled in the second inning to start that two run uprising by Philadelphia. They have five hits thus far in two and two thirds off Swindell. Left handers have been hitting 314 against Swindell this year. The whole league hitting 280. It's been that kind of year for Greg. First pitch is a strike. Collins leading off first. Dalton surveying the scene. with some speed and Swindell decides to check him that was not the a move was it no it wasn't I think he just wanted to send a little calling card Hollins is two for four in the stolen base department Swindell's number in the pickoff department equally or more impressive next pitch Dalton is outside for a ball A 429 career hitter lifetime against Greg Swindell is Dutch Dalton. And he added to that, in fact, in the second inning with that single. And now as Hollins continues to lead away from first, the eighth pitch to Dalton is now two and one. Okay, the reason that Dalton has hit so well against Swindell is that he's strong out over the plate. He can get to that breaking ball. If Swindell doesn't make a perfect pitch on the outside part of the plate, anything on the outer half, Dalton can take it into left field. He is strong, period. He showed that uh, in the rumble last night. He lifted Mark Grace, who's 6'2 at about 190, and flung him. The 2 1 pitch. Tomlinson wanted a uh, reaction from Tom Halley in the third base umpire. Didn't get the one he wanted, and we're 3 and 1. Yeah, if I were going to charge the mound against the team, I don't think I'd pick the Phillies. <laughs> Might wait till the next series. There has not been a great deal of thinking involved in that process <laughs> this year. Is our friend Brian McRae going to the Texas dugout, trying a little variation on the uh, the uh, plan, but that didn't work either. And not uh, a couple good moves. Buck Martinez deftly avoids certain injury on the uh, foul ball from Dalton. Missed it. Missed it by that much. Had him played perfectly though. Lined it up perfectly. <laughs> Notice how quickly I went to your defense. Frozen in my chair. 3-2 count continues on Dalton. There goes Hollins, and he's got another one. This one's a little higher above us. We'll let the fans deal with that one, Buck. Thank you. Darren, we got the message. Thank you very much. Say something nice about him before he does it again. <laughs> Three two two out pitch Hollins breaks it's a ball and once again the Phillies with two men on for Incavilia.
Well, they went out and signed a couple of big free agents. Doug Gravek from the Pirates, Greg Swindell from Cincinnati, and they expected them to be the aces on this staff. 18 and 26, that's their record. And look what three, four, and five have done. Mark Portugal, Daryl Kyle, and Pete Harney's 42 and 18. Boy, oh boy, if Drabeck and Swindell have a normal season, the Astros are right in the midst of things. And, of course, Kyle coming off that no-hitter against the Mets on Wednesday night. Incavilia stepped in, tripled in the second inning, the drive-in one, and later scored the third run. And we can dovetail Incavilia and Kyle together. Before the game, Inky, who was with the Astros last year, went over and playfully tackled Kyle. And three or four of the Astros, with mock or half-seriousness, said, hey, don't do that, he's the franchise. <laughs> And it can well be argued that he is with that breaking ball and that result from the other night. Daryl Kyle rapidly becoming one of the top right-handers in the league. All right, the 1-0 pitch. Incavilia chops it off the end of the bat to Biggio at second. Up with it cleanly. Double pumps. Throws him out at first. And the Phillies don't score. However, they get the one hit. They leave two men on and continue to maintain the 3-1 lead. Friday night baseball back from Philadelphia. The Phillies lead the Houston Astros 3-1 as Kurt Schilling works on a one-hitter through three. We're at the top of the fourth here at the vet in Philadelphia. I want to advise you of a show you may not have heard of before, two of them in fact, the award-winning Sunday NFL Sunday preview show, as it says here, which is on Sundays at noon, NFL game day, with my old high school buddy Chris Berman, who then comes back and uh, does your NFL primetime. Chris Berman, Robin Roberts, Tom Jackson, one hour of television. It's the most complete Sunday NFL wrap-up show. I'm sorry, I didn't read that correctly. Boomer will accept it. Probably. <laughs> Swami, 0-3 start. Well, wow, yeah, he's got to get hot. He will. He always does. Bagwell takes a strike to lead the fourth inning. You know, he took uh, the Bills and the 49ers in the Super Bowl again. This is the, well, I know him since 1971. I think he was taking them even then. And as I said, if you <laughs> do this for 2,000 years, you're bound to be right eventually. Bagwell walked in the first inning, by the way. And pursuant to that, the next pitch is down for a ball. We're one and one. I love this swing. I've always loved Bagwell's stance and the swing, and he responds on cue by fisting it down to right field. He's going for two. Here is the throw from Chamberlain. He's out at second. Everybody's play on this Phillies ball club has been raised a bit. Look at Bagwell hits a good breaking ball down in the corner. Watch the play by Chamberlain. Wheels around and fires a strike to Kevin Stocker at short, puts the tag on Bagwell, and just like that, that leadoff base runner is erased. Wes Chamberlain with a spin move worthy of Stocker himself. Infield quality play. Here's Gonzalez, first ball hitting as he is wont to do, lifts it to left field in Cabilia near the edge of the warning track and we're two down Schilling working quickly and the Astros are helping and that's the one wrap perhaps on Gonzalez first ball fastball hitter and doing both there well, here's Caminiti again 0 for 1 among the Astros on the team now he has the best career batting ever against uh, Schilling at 308. That's a ball and we're 1-0. So much talk early in the year that the Astros might be moving Ken Caminiti to make room for the uh, Golden Spikes winner Phil Nevin from last year but we're here in September. Hasn't happened yet Buck. No they haven't called Nevin up. He struggled in the Pacific Coast League, which is a pure hitters league, which adds about 60, 70 points sometimes to guys' averages. And he has not, did not do enough to warrant the recall in September. 3-0 to Kevin. This is an all-around ball player. This team is full of all-around ball players. You know, that's what Houston has on their mind, a National League championship. And if they can keep these young players together for a while, they might just grow to the point where they can contend. The 3-0 pitch was a strike to elongate the uh, at bat as Mr. Schilling faces his old teammate Caminiti. 3-1 pitch hit to center field. Dykstra moving to his right and in. And Stocker going out and Stocker will make the play. We're out again. 1-2-3 for the third straight inning. The Phillies still lead the Astros 3-1 on Friday Night Baseball. Myers. 
three weeks from tonight. That will be the last promo we'll do. We go on the air with ESPN2 three weeks from tonight. I'm nervous. Chamberlain, Stocker, Schilling, bottom of the fourth inning. And the Phillies right fielder takes the ball. Well, it wasn't leading off. Well, David Raymond is in the house. The Philly fanatic joining the Astros on their bench to consult. Chamberlain takes another ball, 2-0. Oh, Ten assists now after he uh, threw out Bagwell trying to stretch the single to a double to lead off the top of this frame. And now he'll look from the 2-0 oh from Swindell. Chopped foul by the plate, and it's 2-1. and one. Wes Chamberlain with uh, a total of 12 home runs this year, and it's not surprising. He's playing in a platoon. Nine of them would be off left-handed pitching. That's why they have platoons. Yeah, they thought he was going to be an everyday player, and he might well be, but right now he's really come into his own. Jim Fergosi has matched him up fairly well this year. Eisenreich, the other half of the platoon, and what a job he has done in his 132 games for the Phillies. And I guess the expectation was when Lee Thomas could not sign the John Smiley's or the big ticket guys that they'd get Eisenreich to fill in off the bench and play somewhat with Chamberlain. And now Chamberlain hits one deep and uh, high to left center field. Here's, gun, here's a uh, catch by Finley, and we're uh, out here. Let's uh, go back to the studio and Chris Myers. All right, Keith Budweiser takes us to Toronto scoreless with the Angels. Left witch bottom of the third with a man on, and Alomar delivers to score Pat Borders, who had doubled. It's one to nothing. Blue Jays' Todd Stottlemyre has that lead. Let's go back to Veterans Stadium. Thank you, Chris. Blue Jays, 1-0. Is that uh, score going to change, perhaps, uh, during the evening at some point, Buck? More than likely, several times. An adventure. American League East reading like a bad mystery novel, or a bad Wild West novel, or any kind of novel you like. Here's Stocker, fakes the bunt, takes the strike. Singled in the second inning to drive in the third and so far last Philadelphia run. I remember hearing Peter Gammons raving about this guy in spring training and going, well, what's the, what's the fuss about Raising the game, as you were saying, the ability to go to the opposite field, as we saw in his previous at bat. And there, foul ball, 0 and 2. Keith, John Vukovic, the dugout coach for Jim Fergosi, has been a major league coach for 12 years, and he says he's never seen a young player come into the league with the instincts of Kevin Stocker. He positions himself well in the field, he understands what it is to look for pitches at the plate. He's really more advanced than his experience would indicate. Takes the 0-2 for a ball. Saw him in the Eastern League last year. Nothing exceptional in the ball game that I happen to see as we harken back to 1980 and the uh, Philadelphia Phillies World Championship after 100 years of waiting. 1-2 pitch is fouled away, tipped off by Stocker. Keeps himself alive at 1-2. and two. Didn't seem exceptional in the ball game, but had that look. You can see it even in the Eastern League, and it, maybe this is a fan's reaction more than anything else, and I, I count myself in that group. No, the look you, of a major league. Yeah, you see players and they stand out just the way they carry themselves and how they feel ground balls. The strength of his arm was always evident. <laughs> All right, Swindell one and two, and Stocker swings through it for the strikeout. There's more Toronto news. Chris Myers. All right, Keith Budweiser back to Toronto, and Joe Carter with two out off left, which Alomar at first base. And Polonia had trouble coming up with his cleanly, so Alomar keeps running. There's a play at the plate. Carter gets the double. Alomar is in there for a 2 to nothing lead. Toronto still batting. Bottom of the third. Do the name Louis Polonia ring a bell. Here we go again. 2 to nothing Toronto. All right, Schilling, the Phillies pitcher, is in there with uh, a count of 0-1 now and two out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Fills up 3-1. to one. They extended their lead in the National League East back to seven games last night by beating the Cubs. Sw uh, Schilling swings through the Swindell offering, and it's 0-2. I haven't heard 1964 mentioned yet. We're in the uh, fourth inning. I haven't heard it again <laughs> mentioned since we started the broadcast. That's because they're leading 3-1. Astros yeah. score a run, and it'll come in. 0-2 <laughs> pitch. A chopper. Cedeno will scoop it up and throw him out. Cedeno with great reaction at uh, shortstop. And the inning is done. The Phillies are out. One, two, three for the first time. Four complete. Three, one, Philly.
Budweiser takes us to Chicago. Tigers and White Sox in a scoreless game, and Ellis Burks hits it up there, out there. But Eric Davis is back there to make the catch, also hitting 333 with the Tigers. They're still scoreless. The Jays have added another run. They lead California 3-0. Thanks, Chris Myers, back here at the vet in Philadelphia. Daryl Kyle, who threw that no-hitter the other night, still celebrating, or at least laughing it up. The Phillies lead the Astros 3-1, moving to the top of the fifth. That's Chris Donalds there with him, the backup third baseman. And uh, Eric Davis may have found himself a home in Detroit. I think he needed a change of scenery. He is a very young man with a lot of ability, and the fresh start in Detroit might be what he needed. They were talking about uh, possibly going and getting him in the offseason. And they got the chance to do it by surrendering a uh, pretty good right-handed pitching prospect, John De Silva, to get him from the Dodgers, where his longevity was next to nothing. But interesting things happen when you leave Los Angeles. Eric Anthony steps in to be followed by Talbancy and Cedeno in the top of the fifth. Here's the first pitch from Schilling. It's a ball. Eric Anthony 0 for 1. Flying out to center field, leading off the second inning. Schilling was in trouble in the first inning and has settled down extremely well since. 2-0. Keith, even during this four-game win streak, it's been a situation where he's always made one or two mistakes. Tonight, he got a pitch up with a full count to Finley, and that led to a home run. As the Phillies look on, if you count Bagwell's single in which he was thrown out at second trying to stretch, he has retired 11 men in a row. And that streak is in jeopardy now on the 3-0 count to Eric Anthony. There's the automatic strike. And an automatically good pitch. 3-1. and one. Continuing to work quickly and Anthony swinging quickly and bouncing one to left field and Cavillia tries to cut it off it'll go to the wall Anthony is moving towards second will hold there with a stand-up double as the Phillies get the ball back in and Houston has its first leadoff hitter of the night on board as Eric Anthony hits the 3-1 pitch to the uh, left center field defense for the double well Art Howe dropped Anthony into the sixth spot tonight he's been the cleanup hitter and sometimes when a cleanup hitter is struggling you have a tendency to overswing Right here, he smooths out a pitch out away from him, rips it over the shortstop head, and it goes all the way to the wall in left center. So Art Howe, a very good hitter and a former hitting instructor, knows the psychology of a struggling hitter, and he's freed up Eric Anthony, putting him in that sixth spot. Struggling hitter, four hits now in his last 38 at-bats as Tobbins, he takes the first pitch outside for a ball. Mentioned last time up when uh, Tobinsey grounded out in his first at bat that uh, the Lofton trade uh, will follow him everywhere. This is his fourth organization. Started in Cincinnati. Oakland had him for a while, then the Indians, and finally Houston. Schilling checks Anthony at second and delivers. Popped up foul, third base side. Hollins going to the fence. May have a play. It's two rows too far for Dave Hollins. That'll be a strike, and it's one and one. Well, Tobinsey is a very valuable commodity. He's a left-handed hitting catcher that throws well. So he's going to have a job for a long time in the big leagues. And we've talked about platoons. You mentioned it earlier. Scott Service, uh, the former Olympian, the right-handed half of this platoon, has hit well this year, caught well, and the Astros have had some good catching this season. It had been a troublesome point in previous years. 1-1 pitch as Schilling takes a quick look at Anthony just off the edge of the dirt at second base. He's low again, two and one. You know, if you combine the two catchers' numbers, they've hit 20 home runs and driven in 66. Anybody would take that production from behind the plate. Can't argue with that, and the guy's a switch hitter, too. That's the best part. He hits left-handed and right-handed. Two and one pitch coming from Schilling, and Talbancy hits it a mile high. As Anthony retreats, Stocker's under it for the first out of the inning. And now it'll be up to Andujar Cedeno, who has been cold of late, flirting with 300 much of this season. Taubensee flied out to end the second inning, 0 for 1. The average is now at 282. It is said he's in the Jose Offerman stage defensively. 
A lot of spectacular plays, a lot of troublesome plays on easy ones. And if he has the uh, results that Offerman did, he'll be fine. Caught the outside of the uh, zone for a strike, and it's 0-1 with one out and one on in the top of the fifth inning. Three to one Philadelphia leading the Houston Astros. Keith, you'll get that inconsistency in the field from young players. They like the challenge of making the spectacular play, but sometimes relax too much on the routine play. Anthony and Schilling look at each other. Now they try the pick off at second. Not nearly in time. Eric Anthony trying to get any edge he can in hopes of scoring Houston's second run trying to pick up an extra step or two which could be of value if uh, wherever Cedeno hits the ball if he does the 0 1 pitch is fouled off hits the screen we're 0 2 well that's the kind of swing that excites this Astros ball club because Cedeno has some pop in his bat he has the ability to drive in some runs so far this year he's in a situation where he's driven in 45 runs seven home runs decent production from the shortstop position but they believe he's going to project into about a 60 RBI shortstop no two is hit down and a nice dive by Hollins he looks Anthony back to second cross the diamond just gets Cedeno for the second out of the inning Hollins did everything right on that play Dave Hollins has 25 errors for the season and the majority of them have been throwing errors but that's no problem with his quickness for a big guy he really moves around well at third base watch his reactions he's goes to his left gloves it checks the runner at second then gets to his feet and fires a strike across the infield the crux for the out hmm. Hollins had surgery on his hand and returned to the lineup just 13 days after the surgery Swindell first pitch hitting and he hits a pop up to shortstop Stocker under it. The innings over no runs a hit no errors a man left Lenny Dykstra will lead off the Phillies fifth when Friday night baseball continues in a moment. Lenny Dykstra got the ball rolling in the bottom of the first inning the lead off triple that helped the Phillies to their first run and they lead three to one here at the vet and Lenny Dykstra the story is ever Buck Martinez. Yeah, he's healthy. He's been playing all the time, and he's putting up big numbers. He is the spark plug for this ball club, without a doubt. There's what he's done at the top of this lineup. He leads the team in hits, stolen bases, runs, 129, leads all of baseball. Walks, 115 walks. That leads the National League. The epitome of a leadoff hitter. Makes the pitcher throw a lot of pitches. In the first two at-bats, Swindell has had to throw 14 pitches to... Lenny Dykstra and his first ball hitting up the middle Cedeno off the glove and Dykstra will be safe at first scoring on it is a base hit and not surprisingly so tough play even if Cedeno had mastered it so we talk about how many pitches he forced uh, Swindell to throw him and he hits the first one they're listening down there well he saw a number of Swindell's pitches earlier so he had a good idea what he might get swings at the breaking ball so Daniel knew it was going to be a chancy play at first so he swipes at it can't come up with a play second hit of the night for Dykstra talking about swipes Lenny has tried 44 of them and succeeded 35 times might be the situation for this again here's Mariano Duncan 0 for 2 on the night struck out in the first inning one of only two victims of Swindell's in this game and uh, he uh, grounded out in third. Swindell looks over. Dykstra saw it coming. Keith, you mentioned five pickups for Swindell. That's a pretty decent number. Cobbinsy behind the plate is thrown out runners at the rate of 27%. Once again, Swindell to first, and once again, Len saw it plenty of time, goes in standing up. And does a little yard maintenance around the bag. Mariano Duncan left wondering when he gets to participate in this little play. Swindell looking towards him with an eye towards Dykstra at first. And now Lenny goes. The ball's low and inside. Here's the throw. He is safe. That'll be 36. Len Dykstra. We've seen him do everything already tonight. Everything but hit it out of the ballpark. Eddie Tobbins, he didn't have a chance on that stolen base. As soon as Dykstra saw Swindell pick up his foot, he was off and running. Watch the move. There's the foot. Dykstra's full speed. Tobinzi knows he doesn't have a shot, rushes the throw, throws it into the dirt. 
Cedeno keeps it right there at second base. And if you had asked uh, Greg Swindell to throw a difficult pitch for Talbancy to turn around on a throw, that would have been it. And now Dykstra leading off second. Duncan with the bunt. Caminiti was back. They'll have no play at third. Swindell will take a bite out of it. Almost literally puts it in his back pocket. And the Phillies have runners at first and third with nobody out. You can't tell me that that little punch up they had last night didn't bring this club together and get them back on the right track. Look at the Duncan here thinking about moving Dykstra over that really wasn't a surprise bunt. He squared around but drops a good bunt right there. Swindell picks it up has nowhere to go with it. Virtually off the top of the bat too, off that rounded uh, edge of Duncan's. Yeah he was just thinking about advancing Lenny Dykstra over to third and ends up with a base hit. Caminiti was far enough back on that play to allow such a circumstance to happen. Swindell had to grab the ball and had nothing to do with it. All right, here's Kruk. Brian Williams is now warming in the Houston bullpen, the uh, right-hander. As Kruk takes the first pitch for a ball, he is 0 for 2, but has the RBI, the first RBI of the game on that grounder to Bagwell in the first that scored Dykstra. Dykstra at third base. Duncan, who just bunted his way on successfully at first. Three to one. Phillies over Houston, bottom of the fifth. The 1 0 pitch is low and outside, and Taubensee is going to go out and have a chat with Greg Swindell. You can see from the emotion of the bunt, uh, the emotion that Swindell showed as we watch Brian Williams warm in the Houston pen, fresh off the disabled list, recently so anyway. And Art Howe contemplating but hoping not to have to make a pitching change. Bob Cluck coming out to the mound to talk the pitching coach of the Astros this is a dual purpose trip to the mound right here it'll give his right hander Williams a chance to throw down in the bullpen and it'll give him a chance to allow Greg Swindell an opportunity to regroup that cool down the emotion was evident when uh, he had to pick up Duncan's bunt and had nothing to do with it As you could see him swing his arm in frustration and make the gesture that almost looked like he was, uh, as the cliche goes, putting the ball in his back pocket. The county is 2-0 to Kruk. There are runners at first and third. Brian Williams is warming in the bullpen. Swindell has just once gotten through an entire inning in this game, 1-2-3. He's gotten Kruk twice. Here's the 2-0 pitch, swung on first side. Bagwell steps it to the bag at first with the first out and has nothing else to do. Good play by Bagwell. He made a quick judgment, caught the ball, went to the bag, and then chased Dykstra back at third base. Any bit of indecisiveness, and Dykstra can break to home. Once again, Kruk pulls it to the first base side of the field. Look at Bagwell. Quickly goes right to first base, steps on the bag, and then chases Dykstra back to third. Oh, they call it a foul ball. Got both of us. Big time. That's the mark of a good first baseman, though, to uh, execute the play no matter what. All right, so it's two and one. And the throw over to first. Duncan back in plenty of time. The scenario continues. Two and one. Duncan at first. Dykstra at third. And Kruk flinches on a ball. Three and one. The Phillies on the verge of breaking their all-time attendance record of 2.7 plus million. They will do it either tonight or tomorrow, depending on the official attendance, as Swindell again goes to the bag to cut down on Duncan's lead. They need 28,191 to break their all-time attendance record. Did you ever play those uh, guess the attendance contest? Want to get a wild guess here? Three and one from Swindell, and once again, this one is legit. It's a fair ball, and he gets the out at first, and that second as well. Bagwell made that play, had practice for it. It's a double play. Dykstra held third. What a play by Bagwell. He had three different things to think about, and he picked the two that worked for him. Watch it, first base. Another shot. Quickly to the bag. He's thinking home, but still has the presence to go to second and get Duncan. Great reactions here by Bagwell. The ball takes him right to the bag. He's thinking about Dykstra at third, but still goes to second in time to get Duncan. 
What a fine play. Collins is up and lines it to left field. Gonzalez almost in position, uh, almost perfectly positioned for it. They get the final out. So the Phillies threaten but do not score and will continue to the bottom of the fifth. 3-1 Phillies. We rejoin you from the vet in Philadelphia. The Phillies leading the Astros 3-1. Keith Olderman and Buck Martinez here on ESPN's Friday Night Baseball as the Astros come up after a terrific defensive inning for them. Terrific play by Jeff Bagwell to cut off the Phillies. Greg Biggio, 0 for 2. Grounded out in the first and flat out in the third and leads off the sixth. First pitch from Kurt Schilling is a ball low. Biggio, for so many years, the fastest catcher in the National League and losing that designation simply by virtue of having been moved to second base with an eye towards keeping him fast and keeping him in the National League as, uh, as perhaps the wear and tear of a catcher's life might uh, might be best elucidated by Buck Martinez. <laughs> Here's the 2-0. That's a strike. Let me think about that a minute. I just, all I said was, you know, you'd be good at tell, <laughs> telling me about it here. Not that it necessarily shows or anything, but... Uh, Biggio is fastest by far. He has made a very nice transition to second base. They also got him out of that catcher's position to take advantage of his offensive abilities. Catchers have a tendency to wear down over the course of the summer. That certainly speed-wise, something Biggio continues to do. All right, now the count will be full after Biggio hits that ball foul. One thing catching did not do was to affect his boyish good looks. Craig Biggio, with every passing year, seems to look a little younger. There is a picture of him, like Dorian Gray somewhere, no doubt, aged and uh, having caught too much. All right, the 3-2 from Schilling. Swung on, back up the middle. Stocker ranging to his right. Spin move, throw to first. He's safe. Biggio beat it out. There are more updates on the American League East race. Chris Myers in the studio with the Orioles highlights. Chris? All right, Keith Budweiser takes us to Baltimore 4-2, but the O's with the bases loaded two out. Van Poppel to David Segui, who clears him with a three-run double. And then Harold Reynolds tripled him in in the bottom of the third to give Baltimore and Mucina a 6-4 lead. The Yankees have fallen behind. We'll update that for you in a moment. All right, Chris, thanks very much. You need a slide rule to follow the American League East. Going to be a great month in the East. Blue Jays up 6 nothing. They've lost six straight. Three to the Angels, three to the Athletics. And they've got the Angels again tonight. All right, let's reset here. Steve Finley has now stepped in with Biggio at first, leading away. First pitch from Schilling is a ball. Biggio, the uh, stolen base to caught stealing ratio has fallen off somewhat for Craig Biggio. 14 steals, 17 times caught stealing. His lead is conservative at this point. Here's the 1 0 to Finley. And it's 2 0. Keith, you mentioned caught stealing percentage. He was caught four times this week on hit and runs where Finley didn't make contact, and Biggio was an easy mark for the catcher. You don't get the same kind of break at first base when you're running on a hit and run as you do when it's a straight steal. Here's the 2-0 to Finley, and that's a strike. Two and one. Steve Finley, of course, struggled in his time. We saw the Orioles highlights before. Struggled in his time in the American League as a hitter and developed into one truly in the National League. And the Orioles still thinking not fondly of the trade for Glenn Davis. They released him during the week and have had to watch Finley and Harnish and Schilling succeed in the National League as Finley laces one down the left field line foul. In the first inning, it was a little bit different story for Steve Finley. Well, I got a 3-2 breaking pitch up about belt high from Kurt Schilling, and he rips it over the wall to put the Astros up one to nothing. That was his fifth homer of the year, but the Phillies answered quickly in the bottom half of that inning. And you saw from the surprise look on uh, West Chamberlain's face when we were saying earlier that balls have been carrying to right field and have been getting up and continuing to move up throughout the evening and a pleasant one it is we hope it is for you too all right count two and two Biggio still at first base still nobody out still top of the sixth inning still three to one Philadelphia and Kurt Schilling still working to Steve Finley here's the pitch off the end of the bat to center field Dykstra had him shaded that way anyway moves over and makes the catch 
And I will go back to the studio, Chris Myers, and some more from around baseball tonight. Chris? Budweiser takes us to Kansas City, Keith. In a scoreless game, bottom of the first, Jim Abbott against George Brett. Brett hitting 550 in his career against Abbott. Singles in Gagne for a 1-0 lead. But in the second, David Cohn has walked in a run with the bases loaded. So their, their tie will continue to update it for him. Keith. All right, Chris, thanks very much. Superlatives about the American League East and the quality of that pennant race, the excitement of it. You run out after a very short period of time. Well, here's Bagwell. We saw that great play in the bottom of the fifth inning. As you pointed out, so many things to think about. He did them all well. Biggio going to second. They'll make the play there on him. He takes Duncan out, and Bagwell makes it successfully to first. The ball gets away from Kruk. He chases it, but Bagwell holds first. Good job by Biggio down at second base. Hollins got the lead runner, but it was going to be a very difficult play to get two on ball was hit high and then Holland very deliberately takes his time thinking that he's only going to have a chance for one the throw from Duncan is in the dirt gets away from Kruk but Bagwell can't advance so we'll have two outs as Luis Gonzalez steps in once again and he is 0 for 2 on the night the Astros left fielder struck out looking in the first inning and then flying out to left field in the fourth and now steps in representing the potential tying run for Houston. Knew I'd get to that cliche at some point. In the dirt, Dalton scoops nicely. It's 1-0. Biggio was not far off the mound, off the uh, bag at first, rather. Since Finley homered in the first, as we showed you, they have had four base runners, and one of them was thrown out. Their batters 0 for 7 with anybody on base in this game. Kurt Schilling has mastered them. He went through that streak of uh, 11 consecutive batters retired, counting Bagwell being thrown out, trying to stretch a single to a double. Here's the 1 0. Off the end of the bat, down the left field line, in the seats, and foul. Even though Schilling is 4 0 since the All Star break, he's really not pleased with the way he's throwing. He doesn't think he has real good command. Gonzalez 0 for 2 tonight. His average sits at 300. On Monday, Labor Day, he drove in five runs against the Mets a two run double and a three run homer. We had a five RBI performance here last night from Dykstra, which uh, was his career high. Each phase of Dykstra's career being shown in these last two games. Again, off the end of the bat and foul, and in the seats back of third, and we will now hold it one and two. You know, in this day and age of clubs thinking about salaries and budgets and staying within a budgetary framework, it'll be interesting to see if the Astros can keep this young team together beyond their arbitration years into their free agency. Especially so in light of the uh, spending spree by new owner Drayton McLean last year as Gonzalez fouls it back to the screen. There has been some talk that even this winter they want to pair the roster payroll back to some degree, perhaps not on the scale of the San Diego Padres or anything like that, but a few million dollars here or there. We can save a few million dollars. <laughs> here or there. Gee whiz, how much you got on you, Buck? I'd like to save a few million dollars too. But you're right, they should do what uh, Cleveland did or try to anyway. Called strike three. Gonzalez thought it was inside. Jammed him again. We're done in the top of the six. The Phillies lead three to one. We'll continue from the vet after this. The Phillies and the Astros, the home side with a 3 to 1 win lead, and Dalton has stepped in. First pitch swinging and sending one foul of third base line. Sorry, broke into my Harry Callis again. It's an involuntary experience. And Buck, you were talking about this 64 Phillies thing. The dichotomy of opinion here about whether the Phillies are in serious trouble or already have it. Here's the 0 1, taken for a strike by Dalton. One of the Philadelphia newspapers today with a long article about how those native of Philadelphia Phillies, Jeff Matto and Ruben Amaro Jr., know of the history of the 64 Phillies. The other one saying the 64 Phillies curse is over. So there is a dichotomy of opinion completely. There certainly is. Larry Boa, the third base coach for the Phillies, was a member of that World Series team in 80, and he said, we killed all the memories of 64 in 1980. They won the World Championship. One-two pitch from Swindell, and it's taken for a ball, two and two. The graphic we showed beginning at the very beginning of the broadcast. 
what the Phillies have done since 1964, the five divisional championship, the world championship. All that is, in fact, since 1976. That's the history these guys would remember as they were growing up baseball fans. Dalton powers the 2-2 pitch deep to right field. Anthony goes back to the warning track. It's off it, over his head. It bounces past him. Finley with the ball picks it up as Dalton chugs into second with a stand-up double. That was hit hard off Swindell, but once again, it looked like Eric Anthony got fooled with the way the ball carried. Take a look at this Dalton swing. That is a swing that looked like he was out in front of. But watch how Anthony drifts on this ball. He's really uncertain, and that ball was a very catchable ball. He's got to get back to the wall in a hurry and then go from there. 30 doubles of the season for Darren Dutch Dalton, and the Phillies are uh, threatening once again with Incavilia and Chamberlain and Stocker to follow. Nobody out in the bottom of the sixth. Philadelphia with the 3-1 lead. And here's the first pitch to Inky. Slash back up the middle past Cedeno. They're sending him. Here comes Dalton. The throw will be stopped, and Dalton will score. The Phillies lead 4-1. So now make it for Pete Incavilia. 85 runs batted in on 95 base hits in this season. Keith, the impressive thing about this RBI was Incavilia was thinking about moving a runner over. He's just trying to hit the ball back up the middle and gets it by Sedano into center field. They certainly put the team ahead of the individual here in Philadelphia. Dalton comes in to score, and now the Phillies once again lead by three. And that knee may be sprained, and it may be strained, and it may hurt like heck, but you wouldn't be able to judge that by just what Pete Incavilia has done tonight. All right, here's Chamberlain. First pitch is down and in for a ball. The Houston bullpen is active once again. We saw Brian Williams before, and that is he once again warming. Four to one as the Phillies have scored again, and Art Howe can't let it go much further. Swindell has been in trouble in virtually every inning. The Phillies have put runners in scoring position now in four of the six innings and scored three times for a total of four runs. Here's the 1-0 to Wes. That's a strike. We're even at one and all. Chamberlain 0 for 2. Good defensive play in the outfield. Throwing Bagwell out when he tried to stretch a single into a double. Incavilia with a modest lead at first. Jumps away from the bag as Chamberlain sends it into the stands. Foul. Back to first base. Chamberlain's play was significant in that Bagwell was the leadoff hitter. He was trying to get to second base to start a rally, but Chamberlain with a fine throw from foul ground down in the right field corner. Here's the one two. Chamberlain holds up and we're two and two. In fact, what he has done in the right field corner and what Eric Anthony has done in various places in right field is a subplot to this ball game, clearly. Yeah, there were a couple of balls that Anthony might have had a play on in right, but it looked like he drifted on them and they sailed over his head. Incavelia's triple in the second, and then Dalton's double. Off the end of the bat, Chamberlain stays alive at two and two. But it is always thus in a, in a ballpark where the wind is a factor, where the field is a factor, where the turf is a factor. If you are the home team, presumably you know wind, turf, or other conditions better than the visiting player would, which would make West Chamberlain look like a better right fielder on the night than Eric Anthony. But it may be only that. Inside and tight, Chamberlain steps away with great dramatic exaggeration, and the count is full three and two. Still nobody out, and Incavilia at first, having driven in Darren Dalton with the fourth run of the ball game. The Phillies leading the Astros 4-1 here at the vet. As Swindell checks him over at first. Inky is not going far. He has tried one steal this year. It was successful. Bat and ball go towards Swindell. Cedeno picks it up, touches second for the out, and then on to first for the double play. A lot of activity on that one, too, Buck. 
Yeah, Swindell had to do a dance to get out of the way of the business end of that bat coming right toward him. He had fallen through with the pitch. The ball came back at him, and the barrel of the bat came right over the mound. Let's take a look at it. Chamberlain gets sawed off, and look at Swindell dance out of the way of that bat. But Sedano's right there to glove the ball, step on the bag, and fire to first for the double play. Another smooth bit of glove work in uh, shortstop from Andujar Sedano. The tough plays made to look very easy. And now Stocker is opposite number at shortstop. Lifts one high back of second base. Finley is in for the ball. And the Astros have retired the Phillies with one run. Two hits. Nobody left on base. We're 4-1 after six. ESPN Major League Baseball is brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural. Proud to be your bud. hit and it has mattered not Bagwell led the fourth inning with a single that was thrown out a second as he tried to stretch it Anthony doubled to lead the fifth they left him there Biggio made his way on when Stocker could do nothing with his ground ball to lead off the sixth nothing's happened now it's Ken Caminiti's turn as the Astros and Phillies go to the top of the seventh inning Caminiti 0 for 2 The noise, I hate to report this, is the wave. First pitch is outside for a ball. You had to do it, huh? I wanted to explain it. I didn't want anybody to think that, uh, I don't know. We were missing some action. Yeah, something. It's not action. It's a wave. Two and all. Well, if it makes you enjoy the ball game, I guess it's okay. Come to the ball game. Have a good time. We have bad times. We have good times in the game these days. Good time doesn't hurt anybody. What the heck? Have you ever seen a wave at a hockey game? 81 pitches for Kurt Schilling. You can see a good strike to ball ratio. There's a base hit. And once again, four innings in a row, the Astros have started the inning off with a base runner. Four consecutive base hits to lead off the inning. Caminiti with his first base hit of the night sharp single through the right side let us see if the Astros can take advantage of that leadoff base runner Jim Pergosi is doubtless thinking about whether or not he's ever seen a wave at a hockey game and the question you posited earlier in the evening or something like that the first pitch to Anthony is a strike Eric Anthony as we said had led off the fifth inning with a double as part of this uh, continuing theme for Houston also batted in the second and flied out, thus one for two, has had his adventures in right field tonight. It is a windy night, and it is an inconsistent wind as he takes the ball, one and one. Well, that will happen in an enclosed stadium. The ball will go up in the air, and the outfielders have to help one another out because it's really swirling in this stadium. With Caminiti leading off first, the ball is hit to Kruk. He knocks it down, doesn't know where it is, scoops it up like a goaltender and makes the play at first. Well, they're not going to hang it in a museum anywhere as a piece of art, but he got the out as uh, Caminiti moves down to second. Well, he might not look like George Scott, but he makes a good play here. Reacts very quickly, <laughs> knows it's in the neighborhood, steps on the bag for the out. There was a little vignette with uh, Kruk last night on a ground ball on a uh, throw to first base as Tobinsey steps in takes the first pitch for a strike with Caminiti down down at second with one out here in the top of the seventh a potential double play ball went off Kruk's glove the relay throw did and on the bench afterwards Kruk was explaining to Larry Anderson how instead of opening the glove he had closed it just before the ball bounced to him and now the ball will skitter to Duncan and right underneath his legs Caminiti has scored we're four to two now the Philadelphia lead a clean or unclean error I tell you what I think was happening Duncan was contemplating holding the runner at third I don't know that he felt he had a play at first base watch his head 
it looks like he's all ready to look over toward third expecting the ball to be in his glove and then it goes off his glove and trickles into center Caminiti scores easily and now the Astros trail by two and the scoring is a base hit under Duncan's glove I think that's a good call I don't know that he would have had a play at first base even though Tobinsy the catcher was running so credit Eddie Tobinsy with an RBI and as the Astros score again and have another runner on base there is a 1-0 count to Andujar Cedeno who is 0 for 2 on the night Tobinsy good side lead at first now fly ball to right field and watch Chamberlain go back move up and make the catch that's what you were talking about the home team right fielder has an easy time of it as he's used to the wind conditions out there in right. The night is over for Greg Swindell. The Houston starter will be replaced by the former Loyola Marymount University star and the backup third baseman on this team, Chris Donalds, the left-handed batter who will pinch hit. So presumably we will see Brian Williams come to the bottom of the seventh inning as the Astros go for broke here. Swindell having given up nine hits and the four runs over six innings. Here's the first pitch to Donalds. Donalds is a pinch hitter hitting 219, but he's driven in six runs. The New York Mets thought the world of this man after they obtained him, drafted him out of Loyola Marymount several years ago. Second pitch is outside for a ball. He did not cut it at the major league level. That's the easiest way to put it. Not for them. They exposed him to the expansion draft. The Florida Marlins readily took him from the Mets. And then within a few weeks, they had to make a roster move, clear a spot on for somebody who had been signed. And Donalds was put on waivers. And Art Howe and Bill Wood and the Astros grabbed him. And he has been a pinch hit and fill-in specialist for them this season and has done a good job. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Hit to right field. Chamberlain will move in. Makes the catch. Gloves it. And the inning is over. The Astros score once. They cut the Philly lead to 4-2. to two. We'll see the bottom of the seventh, and we hope we'll see you in a moment. Back at the bet in Philadelphia, where the Phillies lead over the Houston Astros, cut to 4-2, to two, moving to the bottom of the seventh. Please join us on Sunday night as uh, John Miller and Joe Morgan will bring you more of that wild and wacky American League East. The uh, story of the Oakland A's, who are such a factor this week. They played Toronto and exceedingly well. And now they're in Baltimore, and we'll see them on Sunday night. Cal Ripken and company against Ruben Sierra and company. And the lead company, the Houston Astros, has changed just now. They've gone to relief pitcher Brian Williams here in the bottom of the seventh. 24-year-old Brian Williams comes on in relief of Greg Swindell. This is Williams' fourth professional season. He's moved quickly through the organization. You know, he was initially drafted as a outfielder. They converted him to pitcher. Last year, seven and six. He started 16 games for the Astros last year. This year he started five. He comes on now trying to hold the Phillies to a two-run lead. And he'll work to the Phillies pitcher here at the bottom of the seventh inning. Greg Swindell, while he was in there, threw 85 pitches, gave up the nine hits and the four runs, each of which was earned, and goes out trailing 4-2. Not the most effective of performances for Greg Swindell, but not a bad one, all things considered. And now Williams will face the opposing pitcher. Schilling batting out of a crouch. He's 0 for, 0 for 1 with the sacrifice in the second inning as the uh, Phillies attempted to move that inning along. It did not ultimately lead to a run. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Schilling swings through it for another strike, 0-2. Brian Williams, the uh, ultimate kind of athlete drafty. The Pirates tried to draft him. That's not Brian Williams. That's Dave Raymond. That's Brian Williams. Ground ball to second. Vigio up with it quickly. Schilling just jogging to first, and we got one out. What you're saying about Williams, the Pirates drafted him as a shortstop in 87 in the third round. You don't get drafted as a, as a shortstop in the third round unless you look like a pretty good shortstop. So you talk about him being an outfielder when the Astros picked him up a couple years later. And now he's a pitcher, starting pitcher and relief pitcher. He's done everything in this game but announced it. All right, here's Lenny. Once again, we'll see what sort of mayhem he can produce here in the seventh. He's two for three, triple deleted off, and he had that single and a stolen base in the fifth as the Phillies looked to be about to break the game wide open 
uh, before Kruk hit into that interrupted double play by Bagwell. 0-1-1 pitch is a ball, 1-1. We're preparing a flyer that will be produced and published shortly that uh, viewers can send in for for the exact scoring on the John Kruk and Bagwell play, whether that was simply a double play or an interrupted double play in your official scoring at home handbook that we hope you have with you as you watch Friday Night Baseball. And I have to be honest, he stepped on the bag. Right. So that, in my mind, makes it three unassisted, and then the play to second is three, six. Hey, I'm a catcher. I, I completely <laughs> accept that. <laughs> One and two pitch coming to Dykstra. And he chops it down the first baseline and foul. We mentioned those wonderful numbers about Dykstra's performance. He has scored a run in this ball game, and thus the Phillies are a pretty good bet to win. When he has done that, they are 32 and 22. Two or more, and they're 30 and two. His health and his welfare, the principal factor in a Philly season, as has been shown this year. It's two and two now with one out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. A windy night, a comfortable one for the fans here, comfortable for virtually everybody except the Astros. We've mentioned the uh, travails of Eric Anthony in right field due to that win. Dykstra goes the other way now to left field, and Gonzalez moves in on it, has it in sight, and makes the catch for the second out of the inning. Mariano Duncan, whose attempt to uh, move Dykstra over in the fifth inning resulted in a bunt base hit and who is thus one for three on the night, steps in with two out in the seventh inning. Amidst everything else going on with the Phillies, but Mariano Duncan is quite a story of by himself. He uh, is resuscitated is a good term to use his career after developing into or seeming to develop into a utility man with the Dodgers and then with Cincinnati. And then the Phillies brought him over here essentially in that capacity, but he has evolved into virtually an everyday player at several different positions. Well, I think he's at the stage of his career like you see so many veteran players where they start to understand how he's most valuable to a club. He's become a better hitter. Crook on deck. He's become more selective and knowledgeable of the pitchers. You know, he got an opportunity to play early on at shortstop mm -hmm. because of the woes at shortstop until they were ready to call up Kevin Stocker. His best position, without a doubt, is second base. Counts even now as the Williams offering is in the dirt and it's two and two. The official attendance is in. You got your calculator ready? 31,146. How much they have beaten their all-time record is a question for the calculator. They have beaten their all-time record. The all-time Phillies single-season attendance record set this very evening as you watched on Friday Night Baseball. Gives you chills. 2-2 two -two pitch to Mariano Duncan is laced. Biggio goes back for it. Nice one-handed grab. The inning is over. So Brian Williams comes on to get them 1-2-3. We are seven complete at the vet. Phillies 4, Astros 2. We'll be right back. We rejoin you from the vet in Philadelphia where the Philadelphia Phillies are leading the Houston Astros 4-2. The Astros breaking open with a Finley home run in the first. And then Pete Cavilla with uh, clearly the key hit of the ball game. Back two or three days earlier than they said he'd be uh, with a sprained knee with a score 1-1 in the bottom of the second. He tripled to right field, legged it all the way home. Drove in Darren Dalton in the process for the second run and then scored on a Kevin Stocker single. That gave the uh, Astros, uh, the Phillies rather, the lead, which they have maintained here into the eighth inning with Kurt Schilling throwing a six-hitter against his former team, the Houston Astros, in the top of Houston's batting order, heading plateward. Greg Biggio. One for three on the night. 18 homers on the season, four of them in the last three weeks. Swings on the first pitch. Here's the backhand play from Stocker. They're not going to get him. And the base hit gives the Astros a leadoff man now for the fifth consecutive inning with a single. Biggio hits up toward the hole at shortstop. And look at Stocker ranging well behind third, but the off-balance throw nowhere nearly in time to get the speedy Biggio. 
Well, they cashed in that leadoff base runner in the seventh. Now they've got another guy on base. So two infield hits for Biggio on the night, and now Steve Finley, who, as we mentioned, homered in the first inning. They give uh, Greg Swindell and the Astros a short live one nothing lead. Steps in one for three on the night. He's done nothing since the home run. The first pitch is outside, but a little high for a ball one and zero. Schilling hasn't been bothered when he's had to work out of the stretch tonight. Houston just one for three. Now big left-hander David West starts to throw. As we mentioned, closed it out last night when Mitch Williams was found wanting in the ninth inning against Chicago. Ground ball through the hole between first and second, and the Astros have something cooking. Vigio will stop at second. Finley is on first with the base hit. And the tying runs are both on board for Houston with Jeff Bagwell coming up. Steve Finley's second hit of the night. Now Johnny Padres will come to the mound. Well, he's out quickly. And he wants to slow things down here. Kurt Schilling has thrown 95 pitches. It's a cool night. He shouldn't be running out of gas. He's thrown as many as 129. He had a complete game back in May, 131 pitches. Big strapping right-handed. Actually, a perfect night to be a pitcher. Perfect night to be a big strapping right hand. But if there's anything, Buck, that has truly been a problem for the Phillies in this streak of six wins and seven losses over the last 13 games, as the Expos have been so hot, it has been what the bullpen has done for them. And there is that sense of, of insomniacs, uh, insomniacs unable to get to sleep in the first half, 30 minutes of trying so, where you see the bullpen get up. Keith, that is all over baseball. There is just a lack of good solid middle relief pitchers everybody seems to be in need and a lot of the contending ball clubs are having problems on the other hand after the lecture or the discussion with Padres Schilling came back with a fastball that Bagwell swung through in its own one and another one Barry Anderson David West the two most reliable bullpen pitchers down in that bullpen Larry Anderson cannot possibly come on in time to face Jeff Bagwell we were awaiting that showdown those two gentlemen were traded for each other two September's ago in uh, three September's ago in the uh, one of the most lopsided trades in certainly the decade when the Red Sox wanted Larry Anderson and gave surrendered Bagwell for him and Bagwell swings through three identical pitches and he's out and something got back into Kurt Schilling's psyche right there. Well, whatever Johnny Padres told Schilling, he better write it down. Three high fastballs, and he blows him away. That's only the third strikeout, but it couldn't have come at a better time. Such a rare thing to see because Bagwell's reputation, if anything, Buck, is of a guy who does not give away at bats, who will learn from his mistakes during an at bat, who will not be fooled by the same pitch. And he was. Gonzalez stepping in now. 0 for 3. Twice jammed and struck out looking. And starting him off with a count of 1 and 0. We still have Finley at first. Biggio still at second. There is one out. Top of the eighth. 4 to 2 Phillies. Schilling delivers. The ball is hit hard to left field. But Incavilia seems to be under it. Makes the catch. Two away. Biggio back to second. Finley goes back to first. And that's a different, uh, or perhaps it's the old Schilling since Padres trip out there. Well, he's done a good job all night long holding base runners down once they get on. He's hit 100 pitches now. But for five straight innings, he's had the leadoff batter on. And only once has he come around to score. All right, here's Caminiti. is the last chance to... Uh, conceivably the last chance to uh, ransom either of these runners on base the potential tying runs to give you an idea of the wear and tear on a pitcher's season that was number 101 tonight for uh, Kurt Schilling that would mean the total this season that he has thrown 3,201 pitches 100 pitches doesn't seem like anything 3,000 pitches seem like something truck takes the hop he'll take it himself race to the bag and the Phillies are out of it again so Houston threatens. They do not score. They leave the tying runs on base. We're back for the bottom of the eighth. Coming up. 
Truck, Hollins, and Dalton in the bottom of the eighth for the Phillies. I don't know if you can make it out here. There are a couple of these things flying around, some hot dog wrappers and other general debris. Summer will all be over soon here in the East, Buck, and you can feel it by the wind and feel it not only by its strength and its temperature, but the swirl is back. Now the fall classic isn't too far away. Pennant fever. And you need pennant fever to stay warm as the nights begin to get cold. We've got it, fortunately. There's enough in the National League East to keep it interesting, whether or not the Expos have a legitimate chance. The American League East is providing enough. The Giants and the National League West are providing us with all that we could ever want in terms of excitement, unless you're a Giants fan, where you've had plenty, thank you very much. The Expos, by the way, still tied with the Reds in the eighth, one and one. All right, the first pitch to Kruk, a ball. He's 0 for 3 for the night, but that has not been an indicator of the productivity of the night. He drove in a run in the first inning. Here's the next pitch. It's a strike. And, of course, he was the man who hit the Bagwell ball, as we're now calling it, that uh, deft double play that Jeff Bagwell executed. 3 to 3 to 6, if you will. Next pitch makes Kruk flinch once again. And it's a ball, 2 and 1. Todd Jones nearest to you, the right-hander, and Al Osuna from Anaheim, California, the uh, left-hander uh, furthest from you in the Houston bullpen. As the Astros in the ninth, if they go to a fourth batter, will get to Brian Williams, the relief pitcher, who is now starting his second inning and has retired all three Phillies he's faced. Has a count of two and two on Kruk. He waits. Kruk waits. Now the rock and the kick and the delivery. Outside for a ball and low three and two. One thing we should mention about this Astros team is the depth of their starting rotation. Mark Portugal is a free agent at the end of this year, and there's a lot of speculation they won't be able to afford to keep him. Truck hits the three two pitch deep to left field. Gonzalez goes back, back to the warning track. It's off the wall. Truck is rounding second, holding there rather. Stand up double. And the Phillies are in business once again. John Kruk gets the ball out over the plate, and that's why he's a very good hitter. He uses the whole field. He's tough to defend against. Gonzalez gets up on the wall, but he's not close to it. John Kruk leads off the eighth with his first hit, a double. That's our friend the wind again. You can see it playing with John Crock's golden locks, or dirty golden locks, brown hair, whatever you want to call it. And it certainly played around with Luis Gonzalez. He was not leaping where the ball happened to be by the time he made his leap. All right, here's Hollins. One for three. Singleton, the third, has not been involved in any of the scoring. Back up the middle. Cedeno will not get it. They're holding Crock at third. Larry Ball with the stop sign. Hollins will hold at first with a clean single. So the Phillies have runners on the corners for Pete Incavillia. Or rather, Darren Dalton. Well, Osuna should be ready if they want him. Let's take a look at the base hit by Hollins. Moving fastball away from him. Williams can't come up with it. Cedeno can't come up with it. It sneaks into center field. Finley charges hard, throws a strike to the cutoff man, and Kruk is stopped at third. Making the long walk from the Astro dugout, Art Howe slowly and purposefully just getting to the mound now. We should tell you, if you want to get an idea of what's going on here, that he began to walk just as we began to show you the replay of that last play. You could not walk any slower and not be going backwards. Chatting it up with Brian Williams and the catcher Eddie Tobinsey as the Phillies have runners on the corners and nobody out and a two run lead in what, as they all are, a vital game. And that's it for Brian Williams. We'll see the left hander Osuna when the bottom of the eighth continues here from the Mets. Stay with us on Friday Night Baseball. Darren Dalton, two for two against the left-hander Greg Swindell, will get to face yet another one for the Houston Astros as we see the Orange County, California left-hander Al Osuna. Al Osuna has been outstanding in these situations, coming into the game with runners on. He's stranded 34 of 39 base runners that he has had on base when he's come into the game. 17 hits in 22 innings. Just three home runs allowed, but Osuna against left-handers in this situation has done a good job. Darren 
Aaron Dalton has played two hits tonight and a walk. He's perfect against left-handed pitching. But for the season, hit, hitting just over 200. And now with two men on. First and third is the situation that Osuna inherits. Four to two. The Phillies leading the Astros. He fakes the pitch and delivers to first. Collins is not going anywhere. Osuna now ready to work to the plate. First pitch is low and outside for a ball. There have been times in the last few seasons where Osuna has been a shining light against left-handed pitcher, left-handed batters for Art Howe's bullpen, part of that collective unit that has worked in there for just about as long as Art Howe's been managing this team, always headed by somebody. And in this case, in this era, Doug Jones. Collins at first, Kruk at third. And Osuna working deliberately. That's the polite term, is it not? Very deliberately. Very deliberately. He doesn't want anything to get away from him here. First and third, nobody out. All right, here's the 1-0 to Dalton. It's high. 2-0. He's probably on just to face Dalton. Beating Cavillia on deck. Who, when fed nothing but left-handers, produces 85 RBI and 95 hits. They'll get a right-hander in to face him. All right, Osuna at 2-0 working to Dalton now. This one's popped up foul back of the Houston dugout well into the seats. Tobinson gives it a look, but there was no chance. He couldn't have caught that ball if he'd gotten on a bus and driven into the stands. And now at 2-1, Darren Dalton who has developed into exactly the kind of hitter the Phillies had hoped for for four injury-riddled seasons. An outstanding catcher, an outstanding hitter of the last two years. Osuna goes over and checks Hollins once again. Well, you got to admire the Phillies for recognizing Dalton's potential and sticking with him through all those injuries. They've allowed him to blossom. The infield in on the 2-1 pitch to Osuna. It's low and inside. 3-1. And, yeah, a year and a half ago, spring training of 92, Darren Dalton was coming off seasons in which 200 had been uh, his area of residence in terms of a batting average. And now he's uh, as high a paid catcher as there is in the game. All right, the 3-1 and one pitch from Osuna. Tight, ball four, bases loaded, nobody out. Well, Art Howe out of the dugout once Osuna issued the walk to Darren Dalton. He's going to have to go to the bullpen and get Todd Jones on the scene. Edens, the uh, right-hander who spent so much of the season on the disabled list, Tommy Edens has uh, joined Todd Jones in the bullpen, and we'll wait to see who is going to replace Al Osuna, who faced just one man, walked him, bases loaded, full of Phillies. Edens will come in when we return from the vet in a moment. ESPN Major League Baseball is brought to you by Bud Drive. The less filling beer with a lot more taste. Why ask why? Eighth inning drama at the Met in Philadelphia. Keith Olbermann along with Buck Martinez and the Philadelphia Phillies and the Houston Astros. The Phillies up 4-2 with nobody out and the bases loaded on the verge perhaps of breaking open this ball game, which they would love to do and perhaps reassert their lead in the National League East to eight games if the Expos were to lose or at least keep it at seven if the Expos were to win. Tom Edens has come on now in relief. Well, he's going to have to deal with Pete Incavillia, and you can hear the response to his introduction. Base is loaded. Nobody out. 
And in Cavillia, as the statistic shows, 18 RBI in 18 bases loaded at bats this year. Here's the first pitch from Edens. It's down and low, 1 and 0. Oh. Tom Edens developed into a first class middle reliever for the Minnesota Twins last year and was obtained in the expansion draft by the Florida Marlins and dealt on to Houston for two minor league pitchers, Carrasco and Griffiths. No place to put in Cavillia. 1 0 pitch coming. Fouled off back here, one and one. That's how much the game has changed in the last 10 years. That's one of the key things. Don't you think, Tom Edens, middle relief pitcher, subject of a big trade during an expansion draft, checking the runners. Cruck, you saw at third, Hollins at second, and Dalton at first. Yeah, everybody's keeping their eye open for good quality pitchers that'll work in the middle. The sort of jam you don't want to see any relief pitcher in. Now it's two and one. Now one thing you don't want to do is back yourself into a fastball only count. And he's getting perilously close to that. Edens hasn't worked for Art Howe in a week. Last appearance came last Friday night against Montreal. And there's nothing that Incavilia would like to see better than a fastball only situation with the bases loaded and a two run lead. Swung on foul down the third base side. We're two and two. Incavilia's triple in his first in bat since he sprained his knee Wednesday, not getting to Kevin Roberson's fly ball during the Cubs Phillies game. Game three of that series, of which the Phillies lost three of the first four. Didn't seem to be a factor. Infield. In most of them on the line. Bagwell is straddling that line where the infield grass would be. Vigio creeping in. Here's the 2-2. It's popped up into right field. Playable for Anthony. The tag by Kruk. The throw will be to third base. Inc Kruk will score and Hollins will move on to third and the Phillies lead 5-2. Incavillia picks up another RBI tonight. Got three on the night. This ball gets blown out to left. Look at Anthony fighting this ball as it's blown around by the wind. Kruk tags up at third. No play on Kruk at all. The ball goes over to third, cut off by the shortstop. So Incavillia with a sacrifice fly now has 86 RBI. And the other part of the miracle free agent outfield staff of the Philadelphia Phillies will come to the plate. Jim Eisenreich, the left-handed batter, will pinch it for West Chamberlain, who was 0 for 3 as the starting right fielder. And Eisenreich has done more than anybody could have expected. In his first real pennant race, he's hitting just about 60 points over his career batting average. Still two men on for the Phillies, and one out, and a three-run lead now. Phillies couldn't really afford any front-line free agents. They'd already signed their talent here. So they went out and got some character. Jim Eisenreich, Milk Thompson, Pete Incavilia. Very important parts of this pennant drive in 93. The 1-0 from Edens. Swung on and tipped foul. We're 1-1. One one. As good as Eisenreich has been this year, he's 0-4 against Tom Edens. When Eisenreich was flirting with 350 at the middle part of the season, everybody said, all right, he's going to cool off. This is a 280-290 hitter. There's not a lot of time left to cool off. The man's hitting 338, 321 with runners in scoring position as Hollins is now at third. The 1-1 pitch is tight. The helmet goes flying, but Eisenreich is not in serious jeopardy. Well, the Phillies are very sensitive about that. We talked about the fight they had last night. But you can see Eisenreich just bends out of the way of that up and in fastball. Just look to see where Mariano Duncan is at any given moment. We'll know whether or not any problems are going to occur. Edens with a quick toss over to first to check Darren Dalton, who gets back at plenty of time. And you've just joined us, Keith Olbermann and Buck Martinez from Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Bottom of the eighth inning, the Phillies have scored once. 
Five to two they lead, and Jim Eisenreich has just placed a left field single. That will make it six to two as Hollins trots home. And these free agent guys continue to do the job for Jim Pergosi and the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, Eisenreich gets his third pinch hit of the season. That's a patented Eisenreich swing and a base hit to left field. He, like so many of these good hitters on this Phillies ball club, uses the whole field, spreads out the defense. Dave Hollins comes across to score. That's the first run he scored tonight. And if the uh, Expo faithful, or the Expo faithful, the Philly faithful needed any more encouragement here, the uh, Expos are losing to the Reds 3-1 to one in the eighth inning. All right, here's Kevin Stocker, one for three with an RBI on the night. Takes the first pitch into left center. Gonzalez moving to his left and getting it and ending the inning. Well, not ending the inning, but let's go to Chris Myers anyway. Chris? All right, Keith, you mentioned the Expos. They were tied at one with the Reds in Montreal. Reggie Sanders attempting to steal. The throw gets away as Darren Fletcher tries to nail it. Hal Morris comes home from third. They add a run and go up three to one. It's in the bottom of the ninth. The Expos getting their last shot. Let's go back to Philadelphia. All right, Chris, we mentioned the score buck, and Chris has those highlights to hand. Ready at any given moment. Seventh game of the 1924 World Series. You have, no, he doesn't have those. Here's Kurt Schilling. Busy night for Mr. Schilling. Can add a little bit more to his lead of 6-2, to two, but the ball's top shortstop. Sedeno with the whip action to first, and now the inning is over. The Phillies add two runs, and we'll go to the top of the ninth, leading 6-2 to two when we rejoin you from the vet in Philly right after this. A couple of defensive changes for the Phillies as we go to the top of the ninth. As the 6-2 lead gave uh, Jim Pergosi a little bit more to play with in terms of relaxing his offense. Jim Eisenreich, who pinch hit, goes into right field, replacing Wes Chamberlain, of course, for whom he pinch hit. And we also have a new third baseman. Kim Batiste will replace David Hollins and take his uh, slot in the batting order if that becomes necessary. As Kurt Schilling, with six complete games this season, goes for his seventh, which would tie him not only with Terry Mulholland with a leadership in uh, the Phillies, but would also tie him for second place in the National League with Dwight Gooden, who also has seven. Greg Maddox of the Braves leads with eight. Astros in the ninth. It's Anthony, Taubensey, and Cedeno. Those are the scheduled hitters, certainly, anyway. Well, much like his four wins post-All-Star break, Kurt Schilling hasn't been stellar but he's in position to win for his ball club and give them a complete game. That gives the bullpen a night off down there, a bullpen that has been worked a lot lately. So this is what Schilling had on his mind when he towed the rubber to start this game. Would give Jim Fergosi a night off from the anxiety that that bullpen has provided him of late. A neat eight hitter? Well, could be. Anthony takes the first pitch low for a ball. On the night, Anthony with the double, his only hit in three trips to the plate. Now it's a strike to even the count at one and one. The bullpen, as Buck just suggested, is resting at the moment, certainly. One one pitch is a strike called quickly by Steve Ripley. blustery night but continually cooling off for chilling not cooling off another strikeout since Johnny Padres came to see him in the uh, top of the eighth inning with two men on and nobody out that's four in a row twice on strikes and now Talbancy comes up with one out in the ninth He's one for three, drove in one of the Houston runs, one of the two Houston runs on the night. And stands in with a count of one and oh. That's a strike. Now we're back to the way Schilling was working early. Well, he's done a job. Every time the Astros try to get something going and got a couple of base runners on, he really bared down. Two for 16 with men on base. That's all the Astros have been able to manage against Schilling tonight. 
Now the 1-1. One, one. Tobin Z fouls it off the plate. Dalton with the grab and a little behind the back offering to umpire Ripley. Here counts one and two. There's Larry Boa. He was on that World Series championship team. He's really been pleased with the way this team has performed. And Jim Fergosi has a very strong coaching step. Outside they call it. The uh, Philadelphia fans do not agree. If the Phillies hang on to win here, their record will improve to 87 and 54. 2-2 pitch is fouled in the seats well back of third base. The reason I mentioned that record a year ago, they were 58 and 82. That's a dramatic turnaround. Schilling has been part of it. Another strong outing by him. Right off him. Schilling's hurt. Kruk will not get back to the bag in time. It'll have to go as a base hit. And Kurt Schilling is in a lot of pain. Boy, they don't need any more of this. Terry Mulholland's going to miss a couple of starts. He went down immediately. He tried to get over to the bag at first base and cover it, but his leg wouldn't respond. Jeff Cooper, the trainer, attending to him. And Mitch Williams has stood up quickly to uh, warm up in the left, uh, in the bullpen, the left-hander, the closer of this team. Let's see this again, Buck. Now it's a pitcher's worst nightmare. They, they come back. Let's duck in and see what's going on back with the highlights from Chris Myers. All right, Keith, in Montreal, there were two out in the ninth inning. The Reds leading 3-1. to one. Jeff Reardon to Will Cordero with a man on. It's up, out, and gone to tie the game at three. They're going to the tenth inning. Tied at three. Remember, the Expos still have three games remaining with the Phils. They're trying to stay within seven games of Philadelphia's lead in the East, Keith. All right, Chris, another night, another hero for the Montreal Expos, and that's one bit of good news for Philadelphia Phillies fans, is, uh, or bad news. That's one bit of bad news. The other bit of bad news is Kurt Schilling is out of the ball game. No chance will be taken with him. But I think they're encouraged by the fact he got up and walked off the field. So Mitch Williams will come on, and it's not a save situation, so he'll come on in this situation just to wrap it up for Kurt Schilling. Jim Fergosi sends him inside the locker room. Go in and get some ice on it. Good job tonight for Kurt Schilling. All right, we'll watch Mitch Williams get ready to come in and try to close it out for the Phils and rejoin you from the vet in Philadelphia right after this. Updating the Tigers in Chicago. Eighth inning off Alex Fernandez. Eric Davis, his second home run of this game. His third as a Tiger. He's batting over 330 with Detroit. He also made an excellent defensive play. It's 3-0. He's driven in all the runs there in the eighth. Keith? Well, it worked for ex-Red Sparky Anderson when he went to Detroit. And maybe it's going to work for Eric Davis, too. Kurt Schilling took one right off the right knee. And Mitch Williams is on in relief. Here it is. Here it is one more time. You think it hurts when you bump your knee on the door? Try that. Right off the kneecap, it goes into foul ground, and he had to leave the game. Kevin Bass, the veteran Astro, has come in to bat for Andujar Cedeno with uh, a man at first and one out, top of the ninth. Six to two, the Phillies are leading. This, as Buck mentioned before the break, is not a save situation for Mitch Williams, nor was the game last night. He made it into a save situation. There's a strike and an unusually large cheer from the veteran stadium crowd. Williams last night gave up a home run to Glen Allen Hill, which made it kind of dicey for the uh, Phillies who hung on to win. Working quickly, here's the 1-1. One -one. Swung on, chopped to third base. Batiste up with it, double pumps, throws to first, it's low, nice play by Kruk, and there's two out. Dobbins, he goes down to second base. And now Chris James will pinch it for Tom Edens, the latest of the three Houston pitchers. Mitch Williams is the kind of reliever that'll keep you on the edge of your seat. 
And he's going to work to Chris James here. You know, Williams got booed when he came in the ball game, but when you look at his record, 37 saves. I venture to say the Phillies wouldn't be where they are without Mitch Williams' efforts. And perhaps you don't want to speculate that a, that a professional needs this sort of thing, but he's territorial about this role. David West finished that game last night. I'm sure he wasn't happy about that. He wasn't happy about the booing. Seems to be working quickly and with more focus as another strike to even it with one and one with the brother of our ESPN colleague Craig James, Chris James. Maybe that has worked for Mitch. Well, he's never been a reliever that would allow the manager to sit back and relax in the ninth inning. <laughs> Don Stanhouse lives. Strike two as he swings through the breaking ball. Official word on Schilling, a lower leg contusion, so it must have hit just under the knee, under the kneecap. The record-breaking crowd, record-breaking for a season at the Vet in Philadelphia, is on its feet. The count is one and two on Chris James. Two out, top of the ninth, 6-2 Phillies. The pitch called strike three. Ball game is over, and the Phillies win. That's it. The lead is, at the moment, seven and a half for Philadelphia. Are they rehearsing for the playoffs? Before the games, they've been running the Welcome to the National League Championship Series on the scoreboard. Key hit, Buck Martinez, Pete Incavillia back with the bad knee. Well, he got it all started back in the second inning. He was supposed to be out of the lineup. Off Swindell, he lifts a high drive toward right. Eric Anthony runs all the way to the warning track, but it fell down. Harris back to the infield. Darren Dalton scores all the way from first base, and that puts the Phillies ahead in the second, and it never trails. Camilla with three RBI and the Phillies seven and a half ahead of the Expos with the Montreal Cincinnati game still in progress. We have much more baseball coming up. The second half of our doubleheader Atlanta and San Diego is en route. We're going to take you back to the studio with Chris Myers, Buck Martinez, Keith Olbermann. My pleasure to be with you. Hope you have a good weekend.